Hey everyone, for those following along, we've been working on this large scale sprinkler automation project. Link on the top right will take you to that. Up until now, this has been running pretty much from the console. I had stated in chapter three that we're gonna be moving towards a web-based application using some of the libraries as we had used in this application, employing JavaScript, Ajax, and RESTful requests to interface between the web page and the device. We've already established what web server libraries we're going to use. Uh, one of the shortfalls we have is the way that we're getting this on the network and we've been doing it by hard coding and compiling these values directly into the code. This is obviously not a long-term solution. There are a couple different strategies to configure the wireless network, such as using Bluetooth. This would require some sort of application to be written for a phone or another smart device, or as demonstrated here, using a third-party application, which would be cumbersome. There is a framework available for configuring wireless for ESP32. Uh, this requires installing the libraries and dependencies onto the device as well as uh, application or a couple different strategies that you need to do it. Again, if you're not using those for other things, they would be taking up space and resources on that device. I already know what my libraries are and I know what libraries I need to get the web server going. I just want to use what I already have to build the framework to get this device configured on the network without using any extra frameworks or any extra software that needs to be loaded onto phones. I want to make this framework as simple as possible and recyclable that I could use it in other projects. So let's do this. Let's make a framework. Let's first find out what these libraries are so we know what we have available as tools. Here's our standard Arduino library for platform IO. Wi-Fi support. The only extra library for this framework, Wi-Fi access point support. Async TCP for our async web server. The async web server itself. MDNS, which I've used in other projects. And SPFFS for file system support. The entire wireless connection framework has to be written with these libraries. For our demonstration, I have a laptop that I'm gonna be using to get our ESP32 on the network. It's going to be split screen with my Mac connected via serial to the ESP32 so we can see the debug output. And those together will have a small window with the ESP32 in the bottom right corner. ESP32 is defaulted. I'll now hit the reset button and get this underway. On the laptop, I'm now going to go over and look for available wireless networks. FBI Tactical is my guest network, but I'm going to be selecting the sprinkler network, waiting for it to come up now in the search. There it is, sprinkler system. I'll select it. There's no password for this network. It's unencrypted. So I'll hit OK. And we should be on that network in short order. A quick check shows us to be on the sprinkler system network. We'll set the URL in the browser to sprinkler32.local. Should connect to the ESP32 wireless network configuration page. Upon loading, it'll refresh the available networks list. I'm going to choose my network now from the drop down FBI tactical van. For this demo, I'm going to select show password so we could see it. And I'm just going to type in some gibberish that isn't going to work. And we're going to hit connect. And we could see a spinner. And if we look at the debug output from serial, I'll show you that the first time that TCP library is always going to crash because it can't be removed from memory. And that second time around, it will try to legitimately connect and fail. And we can see the light blinking on the ESP32 as it tries. And as it sends that failure message right there, it sends it back to the browser we see up above, a message that has failed allowing you to try again. So we click OK, and the whole process resets. I did try and remove uh, that crash that initially happens, that that library can't be removed, uh, but it doesn't work and it really doesn't matter. So now I'm going to type in legitimate password, and we can see in an attempt to remove that library from memory again, I'll get a backtrace as it first attempts to connect and then restart in that initial time. And that's fine. We can see it blinking again as it tries to connect. And this time it does. It's got an IP address on that network, FBI Tactical. And eventually it will send back a success. One thing I want to do is extend the delay before this message appears, allowing you to click OK, which causes a reload of the browser on the configured network. Aside from that, we'll see that the new root page 
for the web server on ESP32 becomes a page letting you know that it is now configured and up on the network. This is almost done, but we do have one more problem. What happens if the network information changes? You become isolated from the ESP32. So I had to put in a hardware factory default with a routine. We're going to talk about that now. There's an inspection that exists in loop and one or more areas for an assigned pin, which I've set to 23. And if that pin goes high, it will then check to see how long that pin remains high. Should it pass a five second threshold, it will remove all the CNF files and then reboot the device entirely. The blue LED will strobe annotating success of this operation. Over here on the far right, pin 23 going into the breadboard and here's three volts. So I'm gonna bring three volts in now, holding it for five seconds until the blue light strobes. There it is. And we can see all the files were removed and it is now defaulted as far as network is concerned. And it says set up for initial configuration. And we are ready back on the sprinkler access point. Turn on wireless on the Mac to have a quick glance and we can see sprinkler system is right back there. The default worked fine. And this is how you would get back on if you lost access to the network. For those who are interested, we'll now go through the logic that made all of this possible. I'll use flowcharts to demonstrate instead of code since it's easier to do so in this video. I didn't just take a linear path to a solution. This is the result of the project coming up with a solution. And we're just going to walk through it from the start of one of our first scenarios. And it is dependent upon SPIFFS. So we want to make sure it's mounted. And if it's not mounted, it is going to restart and attempt to remount SPIFFS. Note here, by restart, I mean reboot. In other times when I say restart, it's kind of rerunning setup, but not rebooting the ESP32. With SPIFFS now mounted, it then asks the question, does network.cnf exist? The result of this question will cause a main fork in this application. It's either going to branch to load network or config network, as we see here. In this scenario, I'm going to show we're going to jump to config network as the first possibility. And this is what happens when network.cnf does not exist. Wi-Fi will be configured in dual mode, both as an access point and as a client. We start the access point with a hard-coded SSID sprinkler system. There's no password. It's unencrypted. It's an open access point. We check for file testnetwork.conf to see if it exists. It holds network.conf in the test capacity. In this scenario, test network doesn't exist. We set the web server root for the net config page. In JavaScript, the rest request updates the Wi-Fi list and checks for a change in the select. JavaScript does a rest request called connect Wi-Fi. This is our main connect and polling function in the web application. ESP32 writes the SSID and key to testnetwork.cnf. And at this point, the ESP32 restarts. The web page from the request in Ajax is still waiting for polling response, however. It's going to poll till it gets a response, and then it'll stop the interval. It'll see if that response is a success. Should that response be a success, it'll attempt to reload the page using the MDNS URL. This will effectively reload the finished page on the configured network. If it's a failure, it'll send a notification that it failed, allowing to retry on the config network page. We have to talk about though what happens when this restart happens after test network is populated with the SSID and key. We come back to this question, does testnetwork.conf exist? It now does. If it exists, we're gonna read in the SSID and the key from testnetwork.conf. Make sure testresult.conf is deleted if it exists. We're gonna start the other Wi-Fi using the SSID and key. We have an amount of retries in a loop to determine if Wi-Fi had connected successfully in the allotted time. If it did not, we'll write the value fail to testresult.cnf. We'll delete testnetwork.cnf, and then we'll restart the entire process. If it did work, we'll write success to testresult.cnf. We'll move testnetwork over to network.cnf, which will change the entire flow of this program. We'll still set the web server root to network config until we restart. We'll return the RESTful status request to the web page, and then we'll restart into the load network scenario. I take us back now to that primary fork. Does network.conf exist? Having just created the network.conf, it does, and that takes us to the load network branch. 
It's pretty basic now. Read in the SSID and key from network.conf. Now we'll start the Wi-Fi with the SSID and key. We'll see that it connects within the allotted time. If not, restart. And now we'll set the MDNS name so it could be reached on the network. Set our web server route for normal operation. And that's it. That's the end of the routine right there. Three data files exist in support of this framework. We have a basic, hey, congratulations, everything's configured and on the network. Just to let you know, a notification, simple, nothing, no frills. Also very basic style sheet in support of this framework. Again, nothing fancy. Then we have the wireless configuration page. The page itself, pretty basic, only has a couple of tools and then bottom banner, but it's the JavaScript that takes up most of this as we see here. And we have some functions and some Ajax, as this is what does line share of the work for this application. There's a couple things that could be changed, like removing duplicate SSIDs in this menu, causing a reboot before the first connect so we don't get that backtrace. But all in all, the framework is solid, it's simple, it's reliable, and it does what it's supposed to. It doesn't require extra hardware to be installed on the phone or extra libraries to be installed in the ESP32. So I think it works good, and it is a framework, so it could be modified and customized for any project. And I think that's where we're going to leave it. I hope you found this project enjoyable, entertaining, informative, and helpful. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. It helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply? <laughs>